This is June with you, along with our sound engineer, Saleh al -Masruri. Now, we have a guest with us in our studio. We would like to welcome Mr. Balachandran Ganesan. Hello and welcome to our program. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. And I'm sure all our listeners are wondering what this is all about because <laughs> I haven't given them any clues so far. Okay. Good. Let it be a suspense. Exactly. So tell us what exactly you're going to enlighten us with today. Uh, peace is a subject. Okay. Uh, sounds very nice, but the whole world is in pieces. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> true. So true. So can we do something about it? Right. Is a larger aspect. Um, yes, we all want world peace, but the fundamental thing is, are you peaceful? When an individual is not peaceful, exactly. He can't. He or she cannot bring peace in the family. Right. Okay. He won't allow his life partner to be in peace. Okay. And uh, if they are not in peace, the children cannot be at peace. There's turmoil. Yeah. yeah. There'll be problems. And then it goes into the street. It goes into the roads and then the village. Right. The city, the country. Okay. So when United Nations talks about world peace, it's all very nice to hear that Trump and North Korea should get together and talk. Uh, but ultimate long time peace can happen. Only when each one of us is peaceful. Right. So how do you achieve that? <laughs> yes. In fact, there are four states of mind. Okay. And we are generally familiar with only two. Pain and pleasure. Right. Fine. Okay. We want to avoid pain. We want to enjoy pleasure. But in these two, we are always in an emotional mood. Okay. But there are two more states <laughs> of mind. And that is... The third is peace. And the fourth is called ecstasy. Okay. And uh, hardly any of us are in that peaceful state or ecstasy state. Right. It's not that we don't get peace. See, when there's no pain or pleasure, it is a peaceful state. Okay. Fine? Yeah. But we're not able to enjoy it. <laughs> Why not? Uh, you feel, oh, what the hell? What am I doing? I've got to do something, you know? Okay. Yeah, I... I... Yes. So I can most of identify us, with that. Most of us just cannot enjoy peace. <laughs> Our okay. mind wants something. Right. But we have to start enjoying that peaceful state. And then the great masters say that if you're in a peaceful state, you can go to much deeper understanding of things okay. within you and outside you. Right. And that is a pleasure of a different order. Okay. <laughs> and that they call it is ecstasy. Right. And it is beyond senses. Whereas the pleasure pain is in the senses, at the sense level. Yeah. Correct. So beyond sense, it is possible to reach. But then you have to, you have to want to do it. Yes. It has to come from within you. You've got to work for it. Yeah. When does the pleasure become ecstasy? Okay, it's a higher order. Pleasure when it is an essential object. So suppose I take some sweet. Yeah. Uh, suppose it gives five units of happiness. Okay. Okay. So I take one unit of that sweet. So I, I should enjoy five units of pleasure. Yeah. Fine. What if I take two units of that sweet? Okay. Should I? Double. I should be getting ten. Yeah. Does it happen? <laughs> no. Suppose you take three units of sweet. You say, "Oh my God, enough." <laughs> A lot of what is called in economics the law of diminishing marginal utility. Okay. So that starts setting in. So if that is the case, the pleasure itself becomes pain after some time. Right. Four units of sweet. I said, no, I, enough, man. I don't want it. Okay. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So what these great masters across the world, what they have found is the sensual pleasures start seeming to give you pleasure but at some point of time they lead you to pain if you don't know when to stop right but when you know exactly when to stop 
that is neither a pleasure nor the pain okay that so is it's a about, peaceful state so it's all about self control it is about self control so enjoy life but when to stop how to do it right so you need some amount of control over your mind yes correct but it's not i think for many people that's not easy to achieve to control your mind yes correct so we need some practice for that okay just like if i want to be a good boxer i have to practice for it yeah <laughs> correct right if i want to speak well in english how many years of training we require and still we know what type of english i speak okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so for everything which is to be long lasting need some sort of a, a training right. a practice okay so one such practice is for the physical body we need some practice and we have got a mind yeah. which is mindless many times yes <laughs> so True. how yes we need some practice for the mind okay unfortunately in all our schools and colleges we are training the brain but mind is something different <laughs> okay okay brain is an analytical power yeah true okay how to analyze mathematics yeah, yeah never looked at it that way yes but mind is something different it's more to do with emotions yes so how do i train my mind it is that sort of training which is somewhat somehow lacking in our education system okay and that is why we have all these sorts of problems so Fine. so it needs to be started in schools from a very young age yes the the earlier the better right after a certain age it becomes that much more difficult yes because you're already you know yes. set in your ways but still it is possible it's possible okay <laughs> it is possible no age is very late yeah and unfortunately or fortunately you have to live with your mind even when you are 80 yeah so even at the age of 80 i should have some control over mind okay otherwise i'm going to give my problems to my grandchildren and everyone yeah. around yeah so this type of training of mind without computers i can live i can ask a computer to help me i mean a programmer to help me yes but if i don't control my mind my life is gone no one can help you <laughs> yes so to be at peace is to train your body train your mind okay so how you, how do you go about training your mind okay that's again a good question what exactly is mind itself is a question is it an organ is brain is an organ yeah heart is an organ okay but what about mind the more we start asking questions about mind you got more problems <laughs> the more confused you get <laughs> more confused you get so first of all you should understand what mind is and then to have a practice to streamline it in a particular way yeah in fact mind is not an organ at all every moment we keep getting thoughts correct yes even though we are talking to each yeah. other but still your mind may be somewhere else true very even true even in program at 8 o'clock somewhere mm-hmm. very you know, true. i got to go there my children are like this so it has our we have a capacity of producing hundreds of thoughts okay the the whole gamut of thought put together can be called as mind okay an example a river what when you see a river do you think it's a river flowing right correct right. but every moment the drop of water you're seeing that is gone some other drop of water is coming this totally new something water something new yeah but for us it appears as a single stream of water right exactly like that every moment you're producing thoughts uncontrolled and the whole flow of thoughts is called mind okay <laughs> okay now how do you deal with these thoughts which are in fact have somebody told me that there are about 60000 thoughts you have every day okay that scares me <laughs> <laughs> and each thought has an impact on us yes it and does and that's all the more scaring <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so you have to do something about it okay okay but then how do the thought thoughts arise fine slowly now we are going inward because all these things are things happening within us right right fine yes okay um within us there now 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 we got to go inside and see how we are built okay fine though we feel that we are sitting down here fine my physical body is sitting down here yes. my solid portion yes but what about my liquid portion in me is it sitting or is it flowing 
Oh, okay. The blood. <laughs> yeah. The blood yeah, yeah. is constantly flowing. Yes. We are sitting. Yes. But the, if it stops, we are finished. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So the blood is flowing. Air within you is also flowing throughout the body. True, true. Okay. The heat is also constantly spreading within you. Yes. So within the fixed body, we have a number of flows. They call this blood flow, heat flow, air flow. Okay. But to the base of that, there's an energy flow also. Yes. Correct. Yes. So the energy also must be flowing. Yes. And the more subtle it is, the faster it will be flowing. Okay. The solid is gross, so yeah. it is fixed. Yeah. But the blood is a bit more, um, less gross. Yeah. Or more subtle. So the blood will be flowing. Right. Heat will be flowing even faster. Right. Air will be flowing even faster. And the energy must be flowing much faster. Okay. <laughs> okay. Definitely not thoughts that, you know, cross our minds. Yeah. But it is astonishing that we know very little about ourselves. We seem to know what is the height of Everest, what is the depth of Pacific Ocean. Correct. Yeah. But what is your depth of mind? <laughs> Nobody knows. Not even you. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're all trying to. So, if you want to be successful, if you want to be peaceful, if you want to be happy and make others happy, start understanding yourself instead of trying to understand others. That's going to be more difficult. <laughs> I, I so agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that itself brings you a certain amount of peace. Yes. So, automatically, there's a sort of yeah. uh, a filtering yes. happening within you. Yes. Okay. Now, when the energy is flowing within you, which is very subtle. Yeah. And it works through senses. The energy which goes through your eyes is a light waves. Okay. So this is a video. Yeah. There's an audio. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's a speaker. Yes. So for all these things, energy is there. True. And through the five senses, we get information. Through five sense yes. organs, yes. we get information. Yes. And that goes to the brain. Okay. 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 And depending on my experience, it comes as a pain or pleasure. Right. My thought. Right. So, every moment, because your five senses are active and you're seeing things, you're affected by that. Okay. For a change, what we do is, we close the five senses as it were. Okay, I close my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't hear any sound. Okay. I sit in a room, no sound, no smell, Okay. no taste. Okay. I'm sitting down like that and instead of mind going away, Yes. Thinking of something else. Yes. I want to focus the mind on my life energy, my energy flow. Okay. Because the energy is the root of my mind. Right. But how do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's so difficult. You know, as I was saying to you before, I tried mm -hmm. to meditate and I was an utter failure. <laughs> It's always like that in the big any anything which is worth pursuing will be difficult in the beginning yeah <laughs> anything which is very easy in the beginning is not worth it takes time and <laughs> yeah, patience yeah, correct okay so the mind we are always used to looking outward yes so give a totally 180 degrees turn to the mind okay so what i do is i don't see anything i don't share anything i don't smell anything i keep the environment like that and then try to focus on my energy. Okay. Which is tough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there are methods. Okay. Now, where do you focus? Suppose I want to focus on my energy. Where should I focus? Is the next question. Yes. Okay. Okay. A few more questions. Yes. Yeah. We'll take a short break. Yes. And when we come back, this is a really interesting subject. I think, uh, you know, maybe uh, just... Half an hour is not enough to get into <laughs> this. So, it's mind-boggling. Yeah, it is absolutely mind-boggling. And it's so, so very interesting because you've brought up so many points, Mr. Balachandran, that uh, we ju just don't think about, you know? I mean, there's so much more to the human psyche than we want to admit, perhaps, or we even care to think yeah. about. We don't even think in those directions. Exactly. Directions. So we'll be back and we are talking with Mr. Balachandran Ganesan, who's here to talk about individual peace, family peace, health, physical and mental uh, wellness 
and how to attain all these virtues. It's all happening on the nation station Aman FM. This is June along with Saleh Al Masruri, our sound engineer. It is the afternoon buzz. 90.4 Radio Sultanat. We're back with the afternoon buzz on the nation station Oman FM. This is June with you and our guest today is Mr. Balachandran Ganesan. Now the bottom line, the gist of what we're talking about today is how to attain inner peace. Yes. Yeah. And that is not very easy. But it's a must. It is a must, especially in today's world. It's not the easiest thing to do. So you're here to give us a few tips yes. on how to do it. Okay. Yes. Now, let us try to understand how our physiology works. Then we'll come to the psychology. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, the blood is circulating throughout the body. Right. Uh, what is the working center for the blood? Is the heart. Heart, yeah. Okay. Similarly, the air is flowing all over the body. Okay. It has a working center. Okay. And that is our lungs. Yeah. Our life energy is also supposed to be flowing throughout the body. Right. What is the working center for that? We haven't studied. <laughs> we don't even know about the existence of life energy. Correct. Okay. But intuitively, yes, I'm a living being, so I should be having life energy. Correct? Yeah. yeah. So there is a life energy in okay. me, and that should be available throughout the body, and it should be having a working center. Yes. And it has a working center, exactly at the physical center of our body. Okay. But what is the physical center of our body? Many people will think that uh, the navel or the belly button, as the Americans call it. Okay. <laughs> we think that that is the I center. was going to say the sternum. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, it is not. The problem is we even don't know what is the center of the physical body. Forget about <laughs> this is the amount of ignorance we have about ourselves. Okay. So it's even further down. If you feel the spinal cord where yeah. it ends, you know, yeah. a tailbone, that is the center of the body. Okay. So with that center, life energy is circulating throughout the body. As long as it is there, we are not able to even perceive or feel the life energy. Right. Fine. But it's because of the life energy, the mind is throbbing, mind is working. Okay. So if instead of my mind thinking of something else, can it take a 180 degrees turn? and focus on the source of mind, okay, which is our life energy, yeah. then the mind is supposed to subside. Okay. An example, there are waves in the ocean. Yeah. If the ocean focuses on the moon, the tide will it, be high. Yeah, high tide. Yeah. <laughs> but suppose it focuses on the ocean itself, the waves will subside. merge with the... Yeah, correct. okay. So the waves, if they can merge with the source, they become calm. Right. Similarly... My mental waves, the source is my life energy. Yes. Today I'm, tomorrow I'm not there. My life energy is not there in the body. There's nothing called mind. True. So mind and life energy are connected. Okay. In fact, life energy is source of mind, is a base of mind. Yeah. So I want to focus my mind on my life energy. Okay. But I don't know where it is. <laughs> but now in this discussion, we find that it is circling throughout the body and has a working center at my very center of the being. Okay. The physical center is a center for my life energy. Right. But as long as it is there, I even don't understand the existence of that. I don't even feel that. Yeah. But according to the meditation practices, the working center can be shifted to higher centers as well. How do you do that? There are a number of techniques. Okay. 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 So one such technique is by magnetic induction. <laughs> All right. I'll use another concept. It's a called there's a biomagnetism within us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We say somebody has got a magnetic personality. You don't know why, but the fellow has got something. Yes. Like you. Okay. <laughs> so a charismatic person. Okay. We call him. Okay. For example, our leader Ga Mahatma Gandhi. He was not a very handsome man. He was not a great orator, but still something was there in him. Yeah, true. True. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So like. So we all have what is called magnetism in us. Yes. Fine. But we don't know how to make use of that, how to enhance that. Okay. So by magnetic induction, we can do so many things. For example, if there's an iron piece. 
Yes. And we got a magnet. Okay. Yeah, but it will. By rubbing this magnet, this becomes a also magnetic. Yes. Similarly, we are also magnetic. By somebody using the magnetism in him can induce magnetism within us. <laughs> Very deep thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least if it is logical it is okay. Yeah. I'm not uh, bringing anything uh, hoodoo. In yeah, this. I know, but I mean <laughs> <laughs> Yes, there are many subtle forces within us and in the universe. Yeah, that's true. That's we are true. at a very peripheral level only. We look only at the physical level at the For example, a car may be very beautiful from outside. Yeah. But what is the power of the engine? That yeah. is what is the most important. Exactly. Exactly. How how the electromagnetism works there? It's not the looks that matter. Yeah. Yeah. Similarly, how the biomagnetism works within us, that is what is the most important. That is what you have to enhance. Yes. Okay. So you work at a very very root root level or the subtlest level. Okay. And so by this induction it can be taken to higher centers. Right. And then when we start focusing on those centers it has been measured calibrated that the mental frequency comes down oh okay fine yeah so and also you will be able to even feel the pulsation of the life energy in you mm <laughs> just like you're able to feel the pulsation of blood yeah, yeah. at some points yeah can we also feel the pulsation of the life, life energy life energy how how it is possible <laughs> okay so there is a practice by which these are being taught right and once you start doing that your mind as i told you the mental wave because it is focusing on the source it becomes more and more calm calm and that is called the peaceful state so it's neither the pain nor the pleasure state but it is a peaceful state okay i have a lot to work on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay yeah and in that peaceful state your research activity starts you will be able to look at things which are normally you don't look at right and when you start realizing some secrets of nature then you say oh that is an extra oh i found out <laughs> archimedes <laughs> but but tell me something mr balachandran like you know i was telling you earlier i find it really difficult to meditate so are there any techniques to help hyperactive people like me hmm. you know i mean my my mind is racing all the time all the time 24/7 i think even when i'm asleep i wake up thinking there's always something on my mind yeah, so yeah. so how do i calm that are there any techniques you know to get into a calm state of mind yes as i told you of course you can focus on your breath it is somewhat uh, easier than focusing on energy okay <laughs> or focusing on a form you see if you see various religions or whatever you know they always keep your mind they ask you to keep your mind focused on different things that's right. all right okay the 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 shapes may vary yeah the objects may vary but they are all trying to do that okay but if you can focus on the life energy which is the thing in you <laughs> then you are going deeper it is not as difficult as it sounds just a question of putting it into practice okay so in that way the mind becomes very very strong because it gets a proper direction right your mental frequency is supposed to come from beta to alpha level to theta level to delta level okay these are the various levels to which the mind can become calm right okay so and then you are able to differentiate between the right and the wrong and you are able to get over your negative uh, habits okay uh, that is another aspect yeah so mind has yeah. got two aspects one is to make it strong right and with that strength you can what are the practices by which i can remove some of my negativities negativity okay i know getting angry is is bad for me bad for my health yeah. bad for the relationships but i do get angry <laughs> so how do i go about it so are you conducting like uh, sessions here while you're visiting yes we do some programs okay okay and how long are you here for we are for about another 10 days another 10 days yeah yeah okay when did you arrive two days back two days ago yeah. great okay just just in case you know people who don't stop thinking like <laughs> who want to attain at least some level of peace yeah, yeah. Of, of calmness yeah okay 
So tell us more. Uh, so the mind I told you about the focusing is one thing very important. Yes. And having that focusing mind, first look into myself and get some of the impurities or negativities from me. Yeah. Getting worried for any small things. Right. Is not necessary at all. Yeah. But I need a training for that. Anger. People with anger issues. Yes, people with anger issues. Yeah. People with greed. Greed is uh, something different and uh, liking something is different. Okay. When the liking goes beyond a limit. Yes. Greed is bad. Yes. But desire is not. Okay. Many people call desire itself is bad. No, desire we should have. Yeah. We should have ambitions in Strive life. Strive for it. Yeah. Yes. So desire is not a negative thing. Anger is a negative thing. Desire is a positive thing. Yeah. <laughs> and greed is definitely And greed is definitely negative. not. Yeah. Yeah. But okay, having said all this, now we are talking about adults. Yes. What about children? In fact, this type of practice for the energy feeling, um, adolescence is the best time to start. Okay. Starting at the age of uh, class 9, 13, 14. Yeah. If at that time they are given this training, yeah. for example, in schools, if it's included there, we could find a totally different uh, civilization. Yeah, because at that age is when yes. the turbulence starts. When the turbulence starts. Yeah. And with so much of exposure to things because of internet, yes, it's very easy for them to go, go into astray. the wrong direction. Yes. But if at that time this input is given and they have control, yeah. You don't have to require a parent looking at you all the way, all the time True. and looking at you. True. They should know, yes, this is good for me, this is not good for me. Yes. You know? Yeah. It, that could be a cultural revolution. <laughs> yeah. I wish, uh, as you said, you know, it could be done in schools. Yes. It would uh, make such fact, a difference. Uh, uh, we had a very nice experience. Um, a student of class nine, he learned these practices. Okay. And then uh, we used to tell when you get angry, you lose a lot of biomagnetism. Okay. okay? Yeah. That's why you feel very tired after an anger. Yeah. After a bout of anger, yes. you're sweating and then you've got to give a, get, a, get a glass of water to drink. You've not done anything at all. Yeah. <laughs> but still, all these things are happening to you. So much of loss of energy is there. Right. So his parents were fighting with each other. So he said to both of them, why are you wasting your biomagnetism? <laughs> they got a shock of their life. I said, what? <laughs> and then they wanted to come and attend the program. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, the parents should do it first. <laughs> you know. But I was so happy to see that That's... the son is making the parents to come exactly, and learn. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I'm enjoying it, <laughs> doing yeah. things like that. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's so much more to talk about, but time has caught up with us. So I want to thank you so much for coming in, Mr. Balachandran Ganesan, and for being a part of our program and enlightening us on so many different aspects of how to be a better person. Yes. And uh, I thank you personally for having honoured me, having invited me and asked me to share my thoughts. It's our pleasure, it's our pleasure. believe me, it's our pleasure. Thank you very, enjoy, very much indeed. Yes, I enjoy Oman. I like this country. It's and we hope you will continue endless. to visit. Sure. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Our thank guest you. has been Mr. Balachandran Ganesan, teaching us how to get to grassroots level, how to attain inner peace, and so be better people. If you are a better person, you pass that on to the next. Imagine where that could go, to your families, to your friends, out to the world. The world would be a better place to live in. This is June on the Nation Station, Oman FM. You're listening to the Afternoon Buzz. <laughs> Bar -gawayakam. Bar -gawayakam. Bar -gawayakam.